Still in the news, it is instructive to watch developed nations creating new economic concepts and policies to limit the damage of the effects of COVID-19 on their economies. If the tables turned and African countries were printing money and distributing cash gifts directly to their citizens, the IMF and the World Bank with our indigenous economies would cry foul, objecting with superfluous economic jargon. Nigerian government essentially must lead economic diversification drive. It is one practicable way to saddle through the current economic uncertainty and instabilities, what the consequences of COVID-19 pandemic should further offer the Nigerian economic managers and policy makers is that the one-tracked monolithic reliance on oil is failing. Joining us live in the, is um, Bola Hong, who is a public affairs analyst, Bola Hong Olojide. Good morning, Mr. Olojide. Hey, good morning, Amaka. How are you doing today? I'm very well, thank you. How are you? Pretty good. All right. I could be better on some better days. Oh, well, it's good to know that you are good. <laughs> All right, let's go straight into the matter, Mr. Lojide. Is there any sense in which the international community could be accused of foul play when it comes to devising policies to weather the storm? Um, in my opinion, we cannot blame the international community uh, because they are not supposed to run our shows for us. So when you see, listen to an American and he talks about capitalism, and then the same America will release two point something trillion dollars as stimulus into the economy. It should tell you that we don't really have anything called pure capitalism anywhere in the world, including uh, uh, America itself. So the, the ball is back on our table to be the one that will fashion out what works for us. We understand our peculiarity better than any other way, than any international uh, uh, community does. Therefore, let us be the one that will run our show. We cannot blame international uh, uh, community for policy issues. All right. Uh, on the heels of that uh, conversation, what is it uh, that handicapped third world countries could be said to have, especially when it comes to having or not having a seat at the Global Economic Roundtable? Uh, well, we can start from the sizes of the of the economies in the first instance. Um, Africa, for example, the size of the, of the economies in Africa are small. Even when you now look at the ones that are fairly large, you may want to look at Nigeria, for example. Nigeria is the, is the biggest economy in Africa. By the time you divide the GDP by the number of people in Nigeria to the to arrive at what you call the uh, GDP per capita. Nigeria becomes um, maybe number 131 or one, between 130 and 132, depending on whether you are putting the uh, IMF uh, uh, ranking or, or you're using the World Bank or CIA ranking. So you can imagine being the 131st country in the world in terms of per capita size of the economy. What, what kind of table are you expecting in the, in the global community? There, there's not much. Apart from that, a lot of the, the, the third world countries, or let's call them the developing countries, are too dependent on the Western countries. Um, well, in recent time, we also see uh, China competing with the Western countries in terms of, um, you know, the loyalty of, of, of countries like African countries uh, to them. So you have that heavy dependence. I'm not even sure that, okay, now we say we do sanitizer. Most likely the sanitizer that we do the alcohol might be imported, the gel might be imported. All we probably do is to mix. So when you have economies that are largely like that, economies that produce uh, uh, only primary products to the world, we don't add value, we're not industrialized, all we do is to import. Those kind of things make us weak when we get to the table. We don't have the bargaining power uh, as developing countries. All right. Uh, I mean, we recognize where we are, third world countries, uh, developing countries, uh, if you like. But, but what can be done now to, you know, reset um, our realities in terms of our predictable economic situation so that we don't, you know, fall deeper into, you know, our pauper status, if you like? Um, I, I, I believe you're talking about in the short term to be able to fix the COVID, or are we talking long term now? Well, well, we might as well look at a long term situation because post COVID life will still continue. 
<laughs> yeah, life goes on. Um, I, I think in the long term, we have to be more visionary. Uh, one of the problems with African countries or developing world is the fact that we don't see far into the future. And that, that's a marked difference when you talk about the, the, the other world that we want to compete with. In the, in, the, in, the, in the developing world, if, if you look at, say, Astro Rock Clinic, if when PMB became the president, he visited Astro Rock Clinic and told himself that in four years, by the end of this first term, I want to be able to receive my Medicare in this hospital. That is a visionary statement. That in four years, I will do this. If that has been the situation, I can assure you that the Astro Clinic will not be in the state that it is today. And it is the same way in all segments of the society. So as developing countries, we have to get more visionary. Mm -hmm. We have to diversify our economy. As of today, we are still monolithic. And even when we try to, uh, um, we say we wanted to diversify into agriculture, there is, no, there is no country in the world that became rich just by agriculture, by producing primary product. We must be able to add value to those primary products. That is why a Netherlands will come and buy our cocoa and sell back chocolate for our Nestle at our backyard. You know, so all those kind of things are things we need to work on. Diversify this economy, get more visionary about what we do, and have consistency of policies. Not that for four years we go in a direction, in another four years, the next guy comes and scatters everything. He will scatter it because there is no vision. We don't have a common purpose that we are pursuing. So the new guy has his own ideas about what he wants to do. So he scatters everything and starts all over again. We need, to, we need to be able to do better for ourselves. Mm -hmm. That's quite unfortunate. Uh, well, now, does the assertion that, you know, we are at a default disadvantage as a so-called, you know, third world nation not feed the innate distrust at a time when we most need to pursue a global solution? Oh, well, talking about global solutions, um, nobody listens to a country that is ranked 131 mm. on the global scene when the countries that are ranked one, two, three, four, five, six, up to 20, 30 are speaking. So if you cannot fix your own country, what gives you, you it, it, it's not just your people that don't believe you. The international community laughs at you, that you cannot fix your own community and you're bringing up solutions. But in reality, it's not as if there are no solutions coming from Africa or coming from, that we cannot provide solutions for the globe to take on. But the problem we will always have is that he that will buy you a dress, you must first of all look at the one he's wearing. Is it good enough? If he's wearing rags, it's obvious that he cannot buy you a dress. That, that is the mentality. And it is not just in the economic space. Even when you look at the healthcare, how has Africa approached COVID organic? another solution that are coming out of Africa. How have we approached it? If they bring COVID organics to Nigeria today, are we going to patronize it? Has COVID organic gone through the, the processes that will make it acceptable to the entire world, or is Nigeria or is Africa expecting that the world will lower its standard because this is coming from Africa, is that what we expect? So these are some of the problems that are militating against global solutions, whether in time, whether it's in economic space or healthcare, uh, from coming out of Africa. If you want to control the actions that a man will take, just control the way he thinks about himself. Once he thinks that he's inferior, it will never come up. You don't need to tell him not to come to the party. He himself will get to the party, will find a corner outside, and will sit there. He won't come in. Right. Now, but, but, but what can we do to ensure that you know, we address the economic global challenges in a way that ensures a more equitable world order you know, arising post-COVID-19? Because like you know, we, we have uh, people who can speak for Africa. If we talk about world uh, stage players like Okonjo Iwala, are they not speaking out for Africa? What's going on? I believe Okonjo is speaking out for Africa. Okonjo, ha Okonjo is, apart from being a very brilliant uh, 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 economist, also has the privilege of 
having a hands-on, I mean, hands-on experience about Africa. He was a minister here for five, six, seven years. And he's also been with the uh, uh, multilateral creditor to most African countries for several years. So he has the benefit of the two sides of the coin. But I believe that whenever he's at those uh, 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 global events, the first thing that comes to our mind is I am primarily first African. So I believe he's speaking out for Africa. But beyond speaking out, don't, don't forget that whatever people like Okonjo do, does, or what she will say, will be in an advisory capacity. So Africa must be able to come up with policy or listen to its own people who have the knowledge and capability and not just talk about policy, but execute them clinically with discipline so that the world can begin to see the effect of those policies in Africa. Right. When our economy, economies are doing better, that is an effect of a policy. That, and that is when we begin to earn respect. It's not just about the talking. We have to walk the talk. And when the world sees economy in economies in Africa coming up and doing very well, building up uh, uh, GDP, building up safety nets, the world will automatically come to respect Africa. And this is the right approach to think. Mm -hmm. The world will never become equitable. They will not throw economic prosperity onto us. We have to find it. And we will not fix Africa. Africa has to fix Africa. Mm. Thank you so very much, uh, Public Affairs Analyst Bola Hon Olojede, for your time. Stay safe where you are. Oh, well, thanks a lot.